Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm reading from the New Living Translation Bible, and passages are verses 44 through 48 in chapter 10. And setting this conversation up, this is the Apostle Peter after meeting with a group of non-Jewish, a Roman centurion, and his household. And they were brought together by God, both of these men receiving visions. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Cornelius Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. There. Got it. <laughs> we have our junior church. It looks like Jan's going to go grab them, see if they want to go. You want to go play? Did she ask you, Jeremy, if you wanted to go? Is that what that was? Oh. I thought that's what she was doing. You might, you might enjoy it more than this. I don't know. How was your week? Good, bad, eh, up, down, sideways. The roller coaster of life, as we like to call it, right? There's good, there's bad. I was uh, listening to Pastor Derwin Gray this morning, as I usually do, and uh, I'm, I, I try to stay a week behind, so that way, you know, I was watching his message from last week, because I know today's isn't up, right? So I'm always a week behind in watching him, and um, it was funny, because he was in Romans 12, and uh, talking about Paul, and what he thought gospel friendships should look like, and one of the things that he said was that, uh, through Romans 12, is that we should be there for each other and help each other because we're not guaranteed a pleasant, fun life all the time. There's going to be ups. There's going to be lots of downs. And the more that we're there for each other, the more that we can, we can ease those downs, right? And I think that's what we've been talking about, about becoming church. And I hope that whatever you face this week, it wasn't uh, detrimental to your time with God, that you still had time with him. You were still able to, to find some alone time, right? Find some time away from the world. It, it does a body good. Trust me, it does. And I hope that in doing that, there's been moments of things that you need to repent from. And what we mean by that repentance we've been talking about all year is that with the things that are keeping us away from God, things that are holding us back from experiencing a, a whole brand new relationship with this God. And then doing so, he gives us the ability to be refreshed and restored, and it, and it changes us from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's what we're always trying to do, right? Today, I know you probably are looking at the, uh, at the, at the message today, and you see that word inclusion, and I know for some, that word inclusion uh, can be... Uh, a negative term. And I say that because culturally, we've oversaturated our, our conscience with this things that, are, that include this word, right? And I want us to understand today that, that the, the word inclusion here uh, probably should be more referenced as uh, not exclusion. And I'll talk about how that works and how it looks that, that Jesus started the, the movement first, and today we see Peter being a part of that movement, right? I, throughout my, my teenage years, I can, 
I can always remember having a desire to be liked. Like, I always wanted to be liked. I, I felt like I fit into a lot of different groups, right? And I know some of you know me from those teenage years, so you can probably go, well, I guess I can see that. But I didn't, I, 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 I feel like I never wanted to be mean to anybody because I never knew when I might need a friend, right? That was kind of my take on how it worked. I, I wanted to be liked by all the different groups of people and cliques, and I wanted to be part of those things. And so what happened for me was that desire to belong. Remember we talked about that last week, how we all have that desire to belong? Well, my desire to belong often led me to making not the greatest decisions <laughs> that, that I could have made because I just wanted to belong, and it didn't matter if the decision was right or wrong. If it got me to, to feel belonging, then I did it. My sister can tell you about that, right? Maybe there's some of you that are experiencing that. Maybe not necessarily from your teenage years, but maybe now. Maybe now there is something happening in your life in which you're really just wanting to belong or you're wanting to do something that gives you that feeling, right? Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's trying to get, right? You've got, I've got career goals, right? I want to be at the top. I don't want to be down here. I want, I want to take that next step. And you're finding yourself willing to do things that, that are trying to get you to the next step. Maybe they're not always the good things, right? Maybe it's not, not, uh, not work, but maybe it's simply trying to find your way and you want that acceptance and care from other people and you're willing to sacrifice maybe some morals or, or some things in order to get that feeling of belonging. I apologize for that screen, right? We're, we're going to work on a way to get rid of that little box back there, I think, someday. One of the greatest aspects of the early church was not that they were overly accepting of all people, right? We want to look at that early church and we want to go, oh, they included everybody. Not necessarily. What they did was they were not excluding people. Now, I know that sounds weird, right? Well, how, how can you have one and the other? And I struggled with this all week. I struggled with this message because I, I see myself... As, as a very centrist person, right? So I see myself as a, a little bit conservative and yet a little bit progressive, but yet not enough of each to be considered a part of either one of those groups of people. And so for me to read this, you know, the notes that were there from, from Bishop Palmer on inclusion, but then to go through studying this passage and thinking about it myself and how the world kind of wants to gloss over that word inclusion, I think about the way Jesus worked. Those 12 disciples were probably the only people that Jesus went to and selected. If you go through the rest of scripture, everybody is coming to Jesus. We don't see a lot of Jesus openly just going to someone. Maybe uh, Zacchaeus, maybe, right? When he said, hey, Come down out of that tree, I'm going to your house tonight, right? But he's going to Zacchaeus, right? In that one instance. But instead, we see all of these trends that flow, and people are coming to Jesus. They're moved by the Spirit of God, and they are coming to him. Last week, we talked about the Ethiopian man, right? What was he doing? He was reading scripture. He was an Ethiopian who was a Jew, he was trying to be at the Passover, and I'm sure that he wasn't welcome. He was a Gentile, right? There's no way you can be a Gentile and be a Jew. And so he probably was at the Passover services and celebrations and probably felt like an outcast the whole time. And now he's sitting on the side of the road, and he's reading Isaiah and has no idea what he's reading. And Philip is prompted by God to go and ask him, right? What are you reading? <laughs> Simple question conversation starter right and he not he he forms this bond with him but it was God working in this man's life in the first place that made it possible for Philip to have the conversation today we are going through this again Cornelius he is a Roman captain of the Italian regiment he's fairly high up the food chain right 
He is a Roman Roman, right? <laughs> Roman Roman. And so here is this Roman soldier who is infatuated And if you want to say the word infected with the Holy Spirit so much, he has been praying to God, he's been offering sacrifices to God, and he has been seeking and searching and has no idea what he's doing. He's not welcome in the temple, probably, obviously. (laughs) Roman soldier, I don't think you're coming in here. Another Gentile, right? Another outsider, another outcast. And yet God is leaning into him and pushing him to seek. The problem that we have in our current culture is we want to include without making sure that somebody's seeking, right? Everybody's welcome. The grace of Jesus. And this probably started in the 90s, right? This probably started in the 90s when uh, it was it was common preaching in that time. Grace, 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 right? And I had this discussion this week about uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's cost of discipleship. You're welcome to pick that up and read it. It's really good. But he talks about cheap grace. And cheap grace is something that, well, I'm just going to go do whatever I want anyway because Jesus saved me. No, it's a costly grace. It's a grace that costs someone their life. So we should, in fact, have a desire to be more like him. I think of how Peter reacted in this, in this, in this text. So you, you really could probably go back and read the beginning of chapter 10 this week to get a context. But basically, Cornelius is, is, man, he is being blessed. His family is being blessed. He's doing the right things, even though no one's ever told him how or why. And God, and an angel comes and visits him in a vision and says, your faith and your offerings have made such an impact. God is sending someone to you. And Peter sees the same vision and is told that he must go to Cornelius and his family. In verse 28 and 29, Before we get to our text, Peter reacts quickly. Peter told them, you know, it's against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a home like this or associate with you, but God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. God is utilizing Peter's knowledge of what he thought was to be clean and unclean. It's a really important part of that text in chapter 10, because basically it's kind of like, it's not going to make you unclean. He has a vision and he tells Peter to go kill and eat, right? Peter's like, oh no, I can't do that. He goes, yeah, you can. It's okay. You're going to stay alive, right? I'm providing this for you, right? okay and that in turn gives peter the idea and the mindset that gentile people who are not jewish can accept jesus and where does he get sent right after this (laughs) to a roman soldier's house like (laughs) what could be worse pharaoh's house maybe (laughs) right and so he goes and and he takes these jewish believers with him too right And they are amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out on Cornelius and his family, and their lives are changed. In order for us to experience the definition of inclusion in a proper way, we must first be willing to avoid the concept of exclusion. We must be willing to understand that all people are made in the image of God, even if they do not seem to fit our definition of someone that God would want. Because God in himself wants all of us. He wants all of us so much that he lost the life of his son in the process to have a relationship with us forever. For the early church to grow, there had to be key ingredients. There had to be something that was believable. There had to be something hopeful And there had to be such value in it that they were willing to share it. 
the new believers, whether they were Jews, Gentiles, an Ethiopian, a Roman soldier, they themselves had to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to believe. And how do they get that? That's from God. We had a, a striking discussion uh, one time about in, in one of my interview sessions about baptism. And I said, well, who brings these people to be baptized? And I said, well, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, even in the, in the sense of a parent bringing a, an infant, the parent is moved by the Holy Spirit to have their child baptized. An adult who's making that decision on their own, a teenager, that they are informed by the Holy Spirit that this is what they should do. It's not something that comes from a, the right pastor or the right passage of Scripture. And it's coming from the Holy Spirit. The Ethiopian wasn't moved by, by, by Philip. He was moved by the Spirit. Cornelius wasn't moved by Peter. He was moved by the Spirit. They needed this Holy Spirit to understand that God did not want them to simply be included. That's what we do with inclusion. He wanted them to allow themselves to bring themselves to the mercy seat of Christ, that their life would be so changed that they would then bring others with them. Others who were outcasts. Others who were like themselves, forgotten. I want you to remember this quote today. This was the early church. We are liberated in order to liberate. We are blessed in order to bless. And we are restored in order to restore. We are called from our slavery to sin in order to help others out of their slavery to sin. That is true inclusion. This was the early church. In the early church, there was empathy for those who did not believe as those who did believe because they were once those people who did not believe. That's kind of like a tongue twister going on in your brain right now, right? In a simpler form, everybody you look at is just like you, but just in a different stage of their belief. And we always, we, we oftentimes get it so, so we don't want to include certain people. And that's okay too, because sometimes we can't. We aren't physically and spiritually ready. Why do you think it was Philip and not somebody else that got called to the Ethiopian? Why do you think it was Peter and not John or Andrew that got called to go to Cornelius? We're not all called to entertain those things because we're not spiritually there. Are we willing to see others just as different from ourselves? Can we ask the Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and minds so that we can see people the way God sees people? As his creation that is fallen and separated from him. Are we able to look past the economic bias that's going on in our culture? The racial bias, the societal bias. Are we able to see people and understand that they are all made in his image and they are all yearning for a desire to be in this eternal family? That's what they're all asking. But sometimes they're asking the wrong question. Just belonging will not get them there. I pray that we can become a church body with open hearts, minds, and doors, as we often use, that we might look like the real body of Christ. That's true inclusion. Amen. If you are able to...